It's the AL Central taking on the East. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the New York Yankees. It's the MLB on 2K Sports right now. Opposing lineup today is going to have tough duties as they will face Javier Vasquez. Here with Steve Phillips and John Kroc, I'm Gary Thorne. This end of April MLB game. New York, Chris Bear, fastballs, fly balls, and of course, Yankee Stadium. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? When you watch Javier Vasquez out on the mound, you know you're going to see quality stuff. He has a fastball. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, the potential's all there for Carlos Quentin to step up and be a star. This guy has it written all over him. He's trying to work on his consistency, though. Sometimes his batting average dips down too low. But I tell you what, there's no one in the league that has more power than him. He can hit it out of the... And Posednik's batting. Well, it was the White Sox taking the win yesterday. That series was split going into game three, so they pulled ahead going two and one against the Rangers in Texas. And this ball club has really, really been on a tear lately in every phase of the game. Javier Vasquez gives himself some breathing room with strike two. Winning eight out of their last ten, and they have an energy about keeping this going. That's it. Pretty well down the line and left. This is a one hopper off the wall. Stops at second with two baggers. I will take a quick look at the Yankees and how they'll be fielding defensively. But Steve, anybody stand out? Curtis Granderson does it with positioning and instincts in the outfield. He stays focused all the time and he reads the ball off the crack of the bat. RBI situation, Alexei Ramirez. You saw their last game, you saw what a big part of their offense he was contributing with three base hits. Vasquez with the pit. Hard grounded a short. And so Ramirez retired. Although it's still early on in the new baseball season for the White Sox, let's take a look where they sit in the American League. First in batting average, first in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in hits, a lineup that puts the ball in play, finds holes, and gets themselves on base. A real bonus to scoring runs. And here's Paul Konerko. Last season, he uh, had a one for seven off the Yankees here in New York. Canarco fouls off another. You're and Paul Canarco strikes out, could not make contact. But just a great sequence of pitches right there, and it only took him three. Boy, that's about as fine a job on the mound as you can get. Strike one. Vasquez got him to come around on it. 0-1. Well, you can tell his timing way off after seeing him swing at that four-seamer. Shot back to first. And it's in there. That hitting streak continues. And the run is in. Now batting. You have to Chicago take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got the first base. That's how you get in safely to second. And Beckham's in the box. Well, they've done themselves quite a job here. This is a nice push at this point of the ball game to get out in front. Well, they take that. That one swung on its line. And the side's retired. Teixeira catches it, comes in off the field. Off to a good start here. They put one over in the first. The White Sox have the lead. One to nothing. And uh, we'll get to see Jake Peavy pitching. He gets settled in for Chicago. Johnny's facing this Yankees lineup today. Paramount on his mind. Well, coming off an injury-filled season in 2009, Jake Peavy's going to look to rebound. He has a fastball in the mid to upper 90s that he throws from a three-quarter delivery. A great slider and a great changeup. He's a power pitcher who strikes people out, and when healthy, he's one of the best in baseball. First pitch to Jeter. He makes contact. Line drive. 
Well, that's a good start. First batter, first hit. Now sponsored by Pepsi, this is how Joe Girardi's offense looks. Any of these bats stand out, Joe? Well, you want to see the most consistent player in Major League Baseball. Just take a look at Derek Jeter. He does nothing extraordinary. Nothing he does just looks at you just look at and say, wow, I can't believe he did that. But year in and year out, he's always there at the end of the season as one of the top players in Major League Baseball. Up the middle. And he'll have to hold at first. For the New York now Yankees. we got a moment here to take a look at that one again, Steve. Number Great job all around. Well, defense Mark running on all Teixeira. cylinders out there right now. It's coming together. And with a runner on, Mark Teixeira batting. Well, Yankees coming in off a loss. Not a good run for them right now. They've dropped their last four. I've talked to some of the guys in the dugout, and they all say that they're ready to shake off this funk they found themselves mired in recently. It swung on, hit by Teixeira. This one's going to be fielded by Ramirez. He gets a bead on it and comes up with the out. Now a quick look for this game at the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. Who do you like out there, Steve? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. It's Alex Rodriguez at the plate two away. Last year, 393 against the White Sox. Ball! Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. Well, Gary, that's a slider down and away, and it just slides out of the strike zone. The best hitters in the game lay off it because they know if they put it in play, it's an out. Slider bends in for the strike two and one. He wanted to go down and away with that slider, but he left it up and away, had just enough movement on it to get the strike. Here's the pitch. And now Rodriguez, a 3-1 count. Well, even though you're three and one in the count, you still have to be patient at the plate. Make him throw a qu swing and a rocket toward short. Throws on to first side is retired. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand it. The White Sox still on top. Fans keeping warm with their thick coats and mittens enjoying the evening here at Yankee Stadium. Pretty amazing how fast they were able to finish the construction. And Rios is batting in the top ten in hits. He waved at that breaker and misses, and an 0-1 count. Vasquez with the pitch. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Now that's going to bring up A.J. Pruszynski. A lot of tough teams in the American League. Let's take a look at where the Yankees sit right now in the rankings. First in walks, second in ERA, and this power pitching staff ranks number two in strikeouts. Quality stuff, getting a lot of swings and misses. He's the league leader in ribbies. Runner on first. Hit hard to second. The second, there's one. And that's two, a double play. Here's a look, 4-6-3 on the double play. Now that's the way they teach you, whether you're at second base or shortstop. One fluid motion, get it out of the glove and get rid of it. And here's Martin, one of the best batting averages in the league. Third ball swung on and missed. Now it's 0-1. Pitch on the way. And that's a strike. Mark Tien's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one. Swing the bat well. Well, he was able to ring up that K, and he needed it, and it got him out of the inning. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. And the Yankees, it'll be their turn coming up. For the New York Yankees. Osada at the plate. Number 20, Jorge Osada. Ball. Cutter misses badly. 1 0. Here's the 1 0. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. And it falls in there. That's going to be a single. That will bring Nick Swisher up. Now a look uh, at the teams who generated the most runs last year, courtesy of State Farm. The Yankees, number one. Second, the Angels. Third spot, the Red Sox. Fourth, the Twins. And at number five on the list, the Rays. 
But when this team steps on the field, it's like a track meet. It seems like every one of these guys wants that ability to hit home plate. Seems like almost every game. They led the league last year in runs scored, and this is a team that has so much team speed and power. That's why they are so successful at plating runs. Great season, top 10 in RBI. Well, he couldn't keep that under control and hit a guy and put him on base. Well, he didn't throw this one where he wanted to. As the ball just kind of moves in on the plate and gets a piece of the hitter. And with that hit by pitch, we saw there. Hit sharply towards the hole. And so Granderson retired. Let's take a chance now to look at the Yankee season last year and how they ranked in the American League. First in hits, first in home runs. And they also scored the most runs in the league, the most potent offense around. It's all about scoring runs, however you're going to do it. And they figured out how to get it done. And it's Nick Johnson now. Too late, and he is safe at second. And so he comes home. That ties the ball game. Production? Oh, the Yankees have found it, and they're keeping it going. Gardner at the plate. This club knew it had to match some production here, and they've done it. Uh, Gary, that was a great piece of hitting right there. Allowed them to pull it even here early in the game. Nice response. 1-0 now. Swung on, liner to right. And that's through a base hit. Terrific opportunity right now for the Yankees. Number two. Well, now he's coming up in front of the bases. Well, you see that single right there, Gary? Loads up the bases, and he's got to make this pitcher work. A lot of pressure now on the pitch, and he's got to look for a pitch to drive. 1-0 count. He took that last one, and it was out of the zone. Lifetime 289 off the white side. Slider just misses the black, falls behind 2-0. But you got the bases loaded, nowhere to put them, and you put yourself in a great hitter's count, 2-0. you got to come in with the strike. You don't want to run the risk of 3-0 and walking a run in. Here's the 2-1. Swung on, line to right field. And that one gets through. Jeter's up and off. Boy, the continuation here of this offense is called big time momentum. Number 24, Robinson. Uh, so now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. And Cano ready for the first pitch. On the ground to third. Two down. And Johnson scores. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they rank. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases. And they were in the top 10 in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Swung on, a fly ball heading towards the corner and right. One bounce onto the wall, and they score him. And Cheater follows him home. This lineup's just unbelievable. They, they found momentum, and they've been able to carry it on and on and on. And here's Alex Rodriguez looking to bring that runner. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. Now that last hit puts a little bit more daylight in this lead right now, Gary. They keep tacking on early. A shot up the middle, and Ramirez feels the ball. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Boy, a manager loves to see this. They strike for an enormous inning. Yankees lead. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. He has to be really upset right now with that last breakdown they had on the mound. They had the lead, now behind, and I mean really behind. Strike one. Vasquez got him to come around on it, 0-1. Well, he threw him that slider right there. Got him to swing a little bit early. Got to be a little more patient with that pitch. And Katze retired. Left fielder, number 24. And Posednik's batting. Javier Vasquez put together a great season in 2009. 15 wins. I think he'll string together another great season. Slider swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Javier Vasquez with that great 15 win season. Swing and a shot down the left field line. That one headed into the corner. Going to try for at least a double. And he's in at second with a double, one out. Well, it's a pretty good pitch to hit right here, and he gets the good part of the bat on the ball. Now he's in scoring position with just one out. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. 
uh, World Series champions in 2009, but still a very strong team as they move forward. How about 103 regular season wins last year? Their 27th World Series championship, still a potent Yankee lineup and club. Hit hard on the ground to short. That's the second out. First in the American League in runs scored. They were first in the American League in hits. I mean, their offensive numbers up and down, just incredible. Well, they were in first in slugging, first in on-base percentage, first in open. Swung on and ripped towards second. Throws to first in time. That's three down. Good work there. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. Posada at the plate. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. Swung on, that is hit. And Posada sent down. Here's how the Central Division race is shaping up in late April, courtesy of State Farm. It's the White Sox in first, second place the Royals, Twins in the third spot, fourth place the Indians, and rounding out the list the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And it's Nick Swisher in the box now. Leads the division in RBI. And that's a ball. He'd be too far outside with it. Gets that call at the knees. Evens the count at one apiece. Well, as it is for many teams, the AL East was a real tough division for the Chicago White Sox in 2009. And that one's off the bat of Swisher. And that should be a single. At the plate. So Curtis Granderson will come up for the White Sox against the American League East. They ended up going 18 and uh, 21 and didn't play particularly well against uh, really anybody with Tampa. Yeah, that's surprised because back up the middle and that'll hold the runner at first. What a tremendous catch right there. I mean, what a great effort getting to that ball, making that catch. And Nick Johnson to bat. Career one for seven off Peavy. And Johnson ready for the first pitch. Called strike and Peavy's got him on one. This is an effective pitch when you can bury that slider, oh down it in, bury it at the back foot of the hitter. Very difficult to hit. Oh. Slider just off the black that time, two and one. Strike cutter two. called strike two. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. Ground ball to short, fielded by Ramirez, and he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. And Jake Peavy is heading in. We're through three here at the ball yard. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton doubled home a run in his last at bat. First pitch to Quinton. He swings now and really hit that. One away. And they look at next Sunday. It'll be Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees and the Chicago White Sox roll into town. Game time is 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific. Okay, that's going to be a great matchup, and everybody's going to want to tune into that one. I'm looking forward to it. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got him at 0-1 right now. Oh! Beckham uh, made his debut in June, and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the majors. Which certainly did, and you talk to White Sox personnel, and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. And he starts Rios out. That's hit foul by Rios. Vasquez with the pitch. Rios again fouling it off. Head up the middle. Oh, that'll move you on the mound. He just barely got out of the way. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. He's getting it done all season long, Gary, and a guy they're really looking to count on. Right there in the top five in home runs. Runner on first, two away. Vasquez with the pit. Hot shot towards the hole.
Now Good offensive back, chance the here. Chicago White Sox, third baseman, number 25, Mark Tien. Well, two hits the last game, and you can see he was getting a little confidence as that game went on, and he's carrying it into this one with another good start. First one to Tien. Here's the pitch. Strike one. Strike one. Vasquez got him to come around on it. 0-1. Pretty good location right there. That slider down. Smash towards the middle. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. And Rios comes in. Now Openings for this lineup Chicago offensively. Whitesaw. Don't give it to them now because they are hot. Mark Potze. Wow, he had three big hits in the last game, and that was on the winning side, and he's getting them going again with that at bat. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. And that's the third out. That'll do it. So they scratch across a run, three hits and a couple left on. The White Sox are not going to concede this. They've made a pretty good chunk out of that lead. Gardner at the plate. He had a single in his last time up. Number 11, Brett Gardner. And here's the first one. That's a strike. Beebe gets it by him. Well, this starts out a strike, and it ends up a strike. you got to swing the bat. He delivers. Too far inside, 1-1. Well, he barely got out of the way of that one. That's definitely, though, going to keep him from crowding the plate. And he looks at a fastball in there, and it's one and two now. He must have been looking for an off-speed pitch in that situation because the fastball looked like it surprised him. Still one and two. Good cutter. Swung on and missed for the first out. Well, they went away right there, and he put a pretty good swing on it, but just couldn't quite make contact. Walking back to the dugout now. And it's Derek Jeter in the box now. Well, the thing is, we talk about Derek Jeter coming into 2009. People are questioning his range. People Ground ball towards second. Back up. That retires Jeter. State Farm leaderboard. We recap the league leaders in extra base hits last year. Well, if you're looking for two guys to stop at first base, these two guys in this game aren't the ones to do it. Seems like every time they hit the ball, they are rounding first and heading into second, at least second base. They have a ton of power. They put the ball in play. They can be dangerous. Throws to first side is retired. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here in this half inning. The Yankees five, White Sox two. And for Sednik's Chicago batting. Had a real strong Chicago offensive Chicago game Chicago last time out. Three big base Scott hits. Sednick. And the first pitch. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. Vasquez sends the 0-1. Line drive. And Cano with a catch. And it's Alexei Ramirez now. One away. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Here's a swing and a line drive. A foul ball. Now a swing and a shot towards second. Well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far, let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Third most in hits, fourth in doubles, and he's also ranked in the top five in hitting with runners in scoring position. A guy that's delivered in the clutch, getting it done, and being a run producer for his team. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. The throw... Not in time. He's able to get in there. Up, to the plate up next, the Carlos Quinton. Right Canerco is certainly one of those players you look at as far as your offense is concerned in combined categories of runs and RBIs. He gets on base, and he can bring base runners in. 
Yeah, and that's the thing. He scores runs with not a lot of speed. He's not a great runner. When he first came up with the Dodgers, the Dodgers thought they had a 40 homer, 120 RBI guy every year, but it took him a while to figure it out. But when he did, he became a really good, solid major league player. Leading the MLB in batting average. And Beckham's in the box. This is the time to be a hero. Team's down, but hit right here, and you're right back in the ball game. Well, no question about that. A hit right here puts them right back in this game. It changes the whole complexion. Javier Vasquez gives himself some breathing room with strike two. Uh, great stuff from the pitcher. Now he's ahead 0-2. He can go in so many different directions. Ground ball, Rodriguez. There's one. And two. They pull out the double play. Well, they do load the bases on two hits, but can't push across any runs. Yankees still enjoying this lead. And it's Mark Teixeira now. He'll lead it off. He's in his eighth year. Mark Teixeira. Fresh count on Teixeira. Here it comes. Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. Well, that's the pitch you want for the ground ball out there. Two-seam fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Just couldn't quite catch the plate. Good eye by the hitter. 1 0 pitch, a slider in there. 1 0 1. Outstanding pitch right here. Great break, great movement on this pitch to get the strike down and in. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. That's one away. Look at the teams who led the league in slugging last year. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the Yankees. The Red Sox in second. In third, the Rangers. Fourth, the Angels. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. Well, Gary, we're going to see sluggers in this game today. And I tell you what, they got guys who can take you out of the ballpark, but they also hit a ton of extra base hits. So they keep double plays out of order. That's why they're so successful in that category. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. And Rodriguez looks at that one for a ball. That'll even the count. Well, Alex Rodriguez is going to put up the monster numbers again. It's a great hitter's ballpark. And the fact that he's a power hitter, but he's also a guy who can go the other way in that short porch in Yankee Stadium. Look for a lot more than 30 home runs in 2010. Lined up the middle. I come able to pull that one in. And it's Jorge Posada in the box now. Two hits, 13 at bats last year off the White Sox. Here's the pitch to Posada. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0-1. Well, I tell you what, for two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. And he's there to retire the sun. Three up, three down for Jake Beebe. And Alex Rios to lead off. And one of the top ten averages right now. Alex Rios. Here's the first one. Swing, hot shot, and in there. Three for three ball game. And a quick look at how the Yankees' schedule is shaping up. They'll wrap up this series with the White Sox on Sunday. They'll stay right there for the next set of games. The Baltimore Orioles. They'll get started Monday night. And it's a road trip to take on the Red Sox and their outfielder J.D. Drew. Boy, there's some great competition in that set of games. Consistency, professionalism, he never seems to give up in at bat, Gary. He's so locked in this year. It's going to be Przinski. And uh, at the back up the middle. And it gets through. Now the tying run at the plate. Now Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. And here's Mark Tien. Now Posada sets up. And that one is put in play. It's going to be Swisher. One down. Well, that's a big first out of this inning. Now let's see if he can come back and get out of this thing unscathed. One out with runners at first and second. Vasquez with the pitch. There's a swing and a line drive. Good offensive chance here. The best hitters in the game use the whole field. You have to be able to go the other way. 
even when the pitch is over the heart of the plate. That's what he does right there. The guys prolong their career, not with power, but with base hits that are hit that way. Here's the pitch. 0-1 pitch, a fastball, swung on and missed, 0-2. I don't think he's going to waste any time right now. He's just going to go right at him with that 0-2 pitch. Fouled off. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. Swisher's there. Runners on the move. The throw. And Rios comes in. Well, what a good offensive team. Finding a way to get the runners in. Take advantage of the opportunities when you have them. That's a good offense. Well, he got a pitch to hit over the heart of the plate right at the belt. He drove it. Didn't get the base hit, but at least advanced the runners. Did get something out of it. I, I'm sure he'd like to have that pitch back. That was one he, he really had a shot at driving. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. An offense here that's going in the right direction. They've got time to put this ball game away. First, you got to get back in it. Now we just hit sharply towards the hole. And he will take it himself for the out. What an individual effort. And, and Swisher settles in. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Here's the first pitch. Called strike, and PB's got him on one. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense, and somebody they've really come to rely upon. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. Able to make the grab on that one, one out. Here's a look at what's coming up for the White Sox. Wrapping up the series against the Yankees Sunday. And grapple with another AL Central team, the Kansas City Royals. That'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then the next series at home brings in a worthy opponent, the Toronto Jays. So quite a few home games they'll be looking to capitalize. One out, Curtis Granderson at the plate. You know, I love watching Curtis Granderson play. There's so many different ways he can impact a game. He has power in his bat. He can cover some ground in the outfield, and he really loves to run the bases. Swung on and fouled away. Curtis Granderson, an exciting player, gives pitchers a lot of problems. When he's on at first base, he loves to extend that lead. And he liner between first and second. This is placed perfectly for a base hit. And the throw. So Nick Johnson will come to the plate. The lineups were the most home runs around the league last year, courtesy of State Farm. The Yankees, number one. Second, the Rangers. The Red Sox, third. Fourth, the Jays. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, a lot of times they say that power hitters can be pitched to if you pitch them carefully. The problem is with this team, they have a ton of power hitters in this lineup. Number one in baseball last year in the home run. And you make a mistake, and everyone in this lineup can make you pay with the long ball. Outside for a ball, and it's two and one. Lifetime numbers 313 off the White Sox. 2 1 pitch, and he watches the fastball go by for strike two. When you can spot your four seam fastball to the outside corner, the hitter has to have balance at the plate and not oh, pull three. off the ball. Slider just about had him 3 2 count. Oh. It's fouled off. The 3-2 pitch. That's going to be a call ball four, putting him on. That's good plate discipline by the hitter right there. Waiting the pitcher out, forcing the throw it over. Well, that's what you want to do. You want to have quality at bats, get that pitch count up. And I tell you what, he worked this pitcher. It's, it's going to be tough for him to get this next hitter out after working that walk on so many pitches. At the belt, the 1-0. Called strike away, and it's even at one. Well, that cut fastball away. It looks like it's coming down the heart of the plate. Runs to the outside corner. It tends to turn into a pop-up. And Gardner retired. Here's how the Eastern Division race is looking as April winds down, courtesy of State Farm. In first place, it's the Yankees. Blue Jays in the second spot. In the three-hole, it's the Orioles. Red Sox seated fourth. And it's the Rays in the last slot. Uh, they came into the season with great expectations, as they typically do in New York. 
but sometimes things let down. Not this year. Yankees playing Yankee baseball, sitting on top and making their fans very happy. At the belt, Peavy swinging a hot shot. Throws on to first, side is retired. Solid outing moves on here. Here's the face of the skipper, Joe Girardi. And now I'm sure glad to be out in front here with a two-run advantage, and he'll want to build on it. Vasquez with the pitch. That's it foul by Canerco. And that's another foul ball. Swing and a ball drilled down the right field line. That one's into the corner. Gone. That's a dinger. They trim a bit off that deficit. A solo shot. Only one down. Look how low this pitch is. It's almost on a tee. It's so low. He gets down underneath it and golfs it out of the park. And that's exactly what it was, Steve. We talk about the nine iron shots. Well, that was more like a two iron because he drilled it. Oh, and out on the mound, we've the got play. Alfredo Aceves. As the Yankees turn right to him in relief. 20, pretty good Carlos performance today 20. by the starter. All in all, pretty solid outing. Now it's up to the pen. Well, I tell you, the pitching and defense have got to be nervous right now as the Southsiders look locked in at the plate. They've almost caught it. Well, working on the 0-1 count now. And in a clutch situation, Steve, a big-time home run. This puts this game up for grabs. And if you can follow the home run with more offense, it can make such a difference. Keep that momentum going. Bring him up. Strike three. Count that one as a cake. Well, it seemed like he made it easy. Three pitches, big strikeout. Can't get rid of a guy any quicker than that. Only took three and he's gone. First pitch, here it comes. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. Now, Gary's still dealing with that one run differential. One out here in the seventh inning. And again, I think it's about making plays right now and offensively force the issue. Get somebody on base and put the pressure on the pitcher. Swing and a miss. Strike him out with a breaking ball. Two down. Boy, uh, those strikeouts so important coming late in the ball game keeps that confidence up. Uh, they tell you that strikeouts add to the pitch count, but a three-pitch strikeout right there, he can go forever on that one. And he starts Rios out. This one's grounded hard up the middle. From his knees, got him. What a throw. Well, they chip away, grabbing an important run with that solo big fly. The White Sox, they're not going to... And so Robinson Cano set to go. 0 for 3 to this point. Number 24, Robinson Cano. That's that breaking ball go outside for ball one. Swung on, that is hit. And Ramirez fields the ball. And Cano set down. For the New York Yankees, first base. Number and it's Mark Teixeira now. A couple of RBIs thus far. Uh, they're winning here, Gary. One of the reasons why is because he's driven in a couple runs in this one. To Shera into the batter's box. Flew out last time. And 
But here's the first one. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. Two away. And fans, look out for next Tuesday. It'll be Roy Halladay and the Philadelphia Phillies. St. Louis Cardinals coming to town. Game gets underway 7 o'clock Eastern. Well, I guess, look, if you and John are going to be at that one, I want to go do that game, too, because that looks like it's going to be a good one. And here's Alex Rodriguez. Well, Yankees coming in. Awful loss. Not a good run for them right now. They've dropped their last four. I've talked to some of the guys in the dugout, and they all say that they're ready to shake off this funk they found themselves mired in recently. And it's in there. Oh, that one did not come too soon for him. He's had a very tough now, offensive to day. Well, sometimes you don't think much of a two-out hit, 20, but if they can continue Jorge to capitalize Osana. and push another run across, they can extend their slim lead. Batting here, Jorge Posada. Hot fastball swung on and missed, 0-1. It's always important to get that first strike in there late in the game in critical situations. Back up the middle. And he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four today. Well, anytime your pitcher gives up ten hits, there's a pretty good chance he doesn't have a lot going for him in the game. And I think if I'm the manager, I'm going to head out there and bring the hook with me. Two men on and two men out. Two down. Runners at first and second. First pitch to Swisher. Swung on, line to right field. And it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. Now continuing this onslaught offensively. That base hit now loads the bases. All kinds of pressure on the hitter. Let's see what he does. So Curtis Granderson is batting. And I have a feeling he's taking a real good look at the fact the bases are loaded. Now well, base hit here will give him a much needed insurance run. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Well, if you can get a start like this every time out from your starting pitcher, you're going to take it. He kept you in the ball game, pitched pretty well. Head up the middle. Oh, he's going to try to make the play. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Well, they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no runs. The Yankees five, White Sox four. It's going to be Krasinski. Here's the pitch. He swings now and really hit that. And it's caught. Play by Granderson. That's one away. Number 25. And Mark T into bat. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. That made it two for three after trading games one and two of the three games set against the Rangers in Texas. Hit hard on the ground to short. And that'll set down Tian. Let's take a chance now to look at the Yankee season last year and how they ranked in the American League. First in hits, first in home runs, and they also scored the most runs in the league, the most potent offense around. It's all about scoring runs, however you're going to do it, and they figured out how to get it done. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. One out remaining here in the eighth inning, and uh, obviously offensively time running out. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Into the alleyway. He'll likely get extra bases on this. And the throw. Kotze heads for third. Now batting. Well, in a ball game like this, you make this kind of a play, you had better be safe. You are in scoring position on second base. This is a very risky play. It worked out, but you have to wonder if it was too risky to take. Tough at bat right here. Scott Pesednik, a good contact hitter with speed. You know he's going to fight. He's gone two for three lifetime off of Seves. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0-1. Well, I tell you what, for a two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. This one into the gap, rolling towards the wall. Tie ball game. He comes in to score. He's going to try for third. Gets in there in time. He is safe at third. Well, in a ball game like this, you make this kind of a play, you had better be safe. You are in scoring position on second base. This is a very risky play. 
It worked out, but you have to wonder if it was too risky to take. So Alexei Ramirez is batting. Definitely some clutch production we're seeing out of this lineup. Hard grounded a short. Jeter able to get it. Throws to first side is retired. So they pick up a run on two hits and leave no one on. Tie ball game in New York. Another chance for the leadoff hitter coming up in the inning. A look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. His plan for getting this game back tied up worked now uh, for his pitching staff to hold it that way. The pitch starts him off with one in there for a strike. Here's the pitch. Beckham. And that'll set down Johnson. Here's how the Eastern Division race is looking as April winds down, courtesy of State Farm. In first place, it's the Yankees. It's the Blue Jays in second. Orioles third place. Red Sox seated fourth. And it's the Rays in the last. This one swung on line towards the middle. And that is in there. The go-ahead run on base. Well, most of the time when you throw a pitch that far up in the strike zone, you don't even expect the hitter to swing at it, much less put the bat on it. But the hitter got his bat on it, and he got that big hit. First pitch to Jeter. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. That's the second out. He really has to go as this one hangs up just long enough for him to run underneath and make the floor. Batting Robinson Cano. Runner on first, two away. On the way. Takes a big hack at that one, but misses one strike. As a hitter with a runner on base, you want to stay aggressive. When you fall behind in the count, it makes it difficult to do that. Watches that one for a called strike. Nothing and two. Oh, it's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. Towards center field. This one's going to be fielded by Ramirez. That'll do it as they put that one away. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. And it'll be the White Sox. A look there at the skipper, Joe Girard. And at this point, every move is critical. He hasn't got any margin for error. And he starts Canerco out. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. As he retreats backward and gets the out. Here's how the Central Division race is shaping up in late April, courtesy of State Farm. First place, the White Sox. Second place, the Royals. Twins in the third spot. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now. And and building that confidence level. That one in the alley. This could be two or more. Coming to bat. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the plate, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. And he is batting here late in the game in a crucial spot. Well, you've got a base runner. You don't know if you're going to get another opportunity. The game may be on the line right here. This is the chance at a game-winning RBI. And Greg gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. There's the throw. In time for the up. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ranked. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. That's hit foul by Rios. There's contact. He drove it well. This one towards Granderson. That's caught. Side is retired. Well, they pick up a hit, but leave a man at second and fail to score. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. Tight game here, ninth inning. He's doing everything he can to make sure they don't lose this game. They're going to need extra innings to win it. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. 
They've decided it was time to make a change here. Steve, what do you think his strategy is going to be against this Yankees lineup? Well, you take a look at this big body guy and Bobby Jenks out on the mound right here, and you know it's about power because of his size, but it's his off-speed pitches, the secondary pitches, the slider, the changeup, the curveball that Strike make one. him overall effective. Strike one to Teixeira. Oh, and one Jenks kicks and deals. And there we go, the winning run on base. I mean, the Mark Teixeira's season last year, let's take a look at how he ranked in comparison to some other players. First in home runs, first in RBIs, and the slugging percentage was there for him, ranked third in the league. That ability to take the extra base and drive the ball, extra base hits are so valuable to an offense. And now the pitch to Rodriguez. Slider just misses 1-0. Now if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. And the pitch from Jenks, too high for a ball. He delivers. It's hit foul by Rodriguez. Jenks sends the 2 1 pitch. Here's a check swing. Umpire says the strike anyway. 2 and 2. That's a called strike three to Alex Rodriguez. That got him. Well, what are you looking at? With two strikes, you've got to be thinking fastball. He got it, and he got it right down the middle. Pull the trigger. Come on. Batting here, Jorge Posada. He's batting with a possibility that winning run on first base could be his RBI. Well, with one out, they have to be thinking double play. Give us a ground ball. That's two gone. I mean, still in the early going. Let's take a glimpse of how the Yankees are doing compared to the rest of the American League. First in walks, second in ERA, and this power pitching staff ranks number two in strikeouts. Quality stuff getting a lot of swings and misses. First pitch to Swisher. And that's in there. Jenks ahead on one. That's a good four seam fastball. You establish the bottom part of the zone, then you run the heater up in the zone. A lot of time it becomes a take pitch. And that runs too far inside, one and two. There is a swing and a liner. And that's going to be a base hit for Swisher. Now look uh, at the teams who generated the most runs last year, courtesy of State Farm. The Yankees, number one. The Angels in second. The Red Sox, third. The Twins, fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, when this team steps up. Hit hard on the ground to short. Ramirez, a nice play on that one. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. This one going to extras here in New York. Bottom three, do up next. Leading it off, A.J. Przinski. He flew out his last time up. Number 12, A.J. Przinski. First pitch, here it comes. There's a swing and a drive, deep right field. Swisher's there. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. Well, they followed the advanced scouting reports to a tee. They played the outfielders back that time, and he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. First pitch, and he misses the fastball, strike one. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Greg gets set and delivers. This one towards Granderson. He comes up with it easily here. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners, this lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient, they let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. 
Line hard down the left field line. Gets down. The go ahead runs on base. Well, a big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch on the way. He makes contact. Line drive. No runs at a base hit. They leave one man on at first. And Nick Johnson to bat. He'll get us started here. Bottom of the 10th. And Johnson ready for the first pitch. Fastball just misses. 1-0. Here's the 1 0 from Jenks. 1 0 delivery is a fastball in there. 1 1. A nice four seamer right there. That one's clearly on the outside corner. He hit the spot. He fouls that one off. Here it comes. And that one will head all the way to the backstop for a ball. Fouled off. Fastball in there. Called third strike. One up. He must have been looking off speed, which I don't understand. With two strikes, you have to look fastball and adjust to the off speed pitch. Either way, he's walking back to the dugout. Gardner at the plate. Had a couple of hits. Four trips to the plate. And here's the first one. Swing and that's going to be hit behind the plate. Bobby Jenks the strike two pitch and Jenks now in charge. Well the hitters dug himself a pretty deep hole right here. Let's see if he can battle himself out of it. That one gets passed but no damage done. One two from Jenks back up and Gardner retired. Here's a look at what's coming up for the White Sox wrapping up the series against the Yankees Sunday. They'll kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals a little division play. That should be a great series. They really match up well. That's a three game series and then a home series facing the Jays and their all star Vernon Wells. Great series there. So a lot of home games on the way the fans will have a chance see their guys many times over the next couple of weeks two outs and nobody on Jenks with a delivery off the plate with a fastball and it's one and oh one oh on the way fastball just misses and he falls behind two and oh this one's grounded hard up the middle back up Throws on to first in time to retire the side. And a good half inning there. Gone. And for those of you catching up with us, hi. I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. Grounded out his last time through. And Ramirez settles in first pitch. Swing and a miss on a pitch that's in the dirt. Did not look good on that cut. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. As he drops back and puts it away. Well, I followed the scouting reports. They moved the outfielders back before the play, and they were in exactly the right position to be able to make the catch. Good coaching. For some reason he tried to hit that pitch in the dirt. It's a strike. Well hit towards the middle and through for a hit. The go ahead run is on. Here's what New York has lined up. They'll wrap up this series with the White Sox on Sunday. And after that they will be home against the Orioles have to deal with Nick Markakis and the O's lineup. A little chance for payback there. A team that beat them the last time out. That'll be Monday. Here's a swing and a line drive. And Quinton's got himself a base hit. Danarco's heading for third. 
The throw. And not stopping there. He's going for it. And they tag him close at home. He wanted that run. He didn't get it. Take the risk, and sometimes it pays off, and it does there. Well, I'll tell you what. I, it's a risk. There's no question about it. He got in safely, but I have to consider whether it's a risk worth taking. Two outs and a runner on second. And the first pitch. Hit in the air. This one's going well into the stands off to the right. And he's back easily. Made a dive to get in. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. We're still tied here in New York. Number two hole set to get things started. Well, this is the kind of situation where Robinson Cano can light up this crowd. What kind of matchup is this? Bottom half of this extra inning. You want to win this right now. And he's got swung on, grounded towards the hole. And Cano is retired. Here's a look at the teams that uh, drummed up the extra base hits last year. Our state farm leaderboard. The Yankees, number one. Second, the Rangers. Third spot, the Red Sox. Jays, fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, Gary, this is not a team you're going to look at and say, okay, they're going to choke up and try to hit the ball the other way. These guys try to hit the ball in the gap or over the wall, and most of the time they do that because last year they were the best in the league at hitting for extra base hits. And I tell you what, you look at these guys swing the bat, they're going to try to lead the league again this year. Bobby Jenks, the strike two pitch, and Jenks now in charge. Tried to get him to go after that slider, but it's one and two. Well, this is not what you expected when you brought your closer into this game. Laboring right now, throwing over 30 pitches. I tell you what, the outcome of this one might not be too good. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching. They've decided it's time to bring a new arm into this one. Johnny's facing this Yankees lineup today. Paramount on his mind. Well, not many guys come out of the bullpen as power pitchers and have the control that Tony Pena does. Rarely does he walk anyone. He has a great fastball in the mid to upper 90s and an above average slider. That's what makes him so tough to hit and why they bring him in in these tough situations to get out of these innings. The 3-2 pitch. Lays off that one, misses ball four. Good bite on the slider with a full count, but the hitter lays off of it. Good eye, ball four. And here's Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod. He's batting with a possibility that winning run on first base could be his RBI. Now with one out, they have to be thinking double play. Give us a ground ball. Now Gary, they're going to have to be very careful the runner at first base. He can run. They may call a pitch out. They may have to throw over a couple times just to keep it close. Here's the delivery. It's swung on and hit by Rodriguez. And it's going to be Quentin. No problem for him. That's an easy up. Had to run toward the line to be able to make this catch, but able to get there in plenty of time. Batting here, Jorge Posada. He's really looking to keep this going. There are, however, two down. Well, a gapper could be a game-winning base hit here, so look for the outfield to play nothing over their head. And that runner at first will be flying on contact. Here's the 1-0. Strike one. Pena evens the count. Well, he missed his spot with that one and got away with it. You want to go to the corners with that four-seam fastball. He found the heart of the plate, but didn't cost him anything. To left center. That'll do it as they put that one away. So they can't push any across here in this half of the inning. Chance to get an expression from Joe Girardi. He's counting on getting to the next inning. Pitching choice is critical here. And he starts Rios out. There's a swing and a smash. This one towards Granderson. As he hauls it in. With a good pitch right there. Got the hitter a little bit out on his front foot. Easy fly ball to center field. Greg gets set and delivers. 
line to left. But that's going to go foul. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And so Pierzynski retired. And here's Martin. Last time up, blew out. Two outs, base is empty. First one to T in. Here's the pitch. It's fouled away. Here's a swing and a broken bat line drive. Throws on to first side is retired. Only five pitches to get out of that. And so Nick Swisher leading it off. Three for four thus far. First pitch to Swisher. Fastball in there for a called strike. The pitch. This one has popped up to the left side out of play. Yeah, and strike three. Nick Swisher. I don't know what he was looking for, but it wasn't that one. Center fielder. A pretty healthy break. 88 mile per hour breaking ball. Boy, it looks like he froze him on the outside corner. He sure did. As a hitter, you've got to recognize a pitcher's tendencies up there. I think the pitcher had him guessing up there the whole at bat. That's a foul ball. Foul! He swings and nails a liner. And he's on the potential winning run. Get ready. Look at the teams who led the league in slugging last year. Brought to you by State Farm. The Yankees, number one. The Red Sox in second. In third, the Rangers. Fourth, the Angels. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. Well, Gary, we're going to see sluggers in the... Swung on, hit in the air to right center. And it's going to be Quentin. He's taking charge, puts it away. Stepping up to the plate for the New York Yankees. Left fielder, number Gardner at the plate. Two hits, five trips to the plate for him. Here's the first pitch. That's too high for a ball. 1-0. Oh. Well, that two-seam fastball has to be thrown down in the zone. You throw it up, it flattens out, and you can get hurt. Strike one. Pena evens the count. That's a good fastball right there. He blew that one right by him. Here's the pitch. And he looks at a fastball in there, and it's one and two now. The one-two pitch. And it remains one and two. Fastball called. Strike three, and the side is retired. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand it. They're still tied here in New York. Bottom part of the order will get their chance offensively. And here's Mark Kotze. He's leading it off here in the top half of the inning. Number 30, Mark Kotze. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. And Greg gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, for a ball that had that type of movement on it, that slider at surprising velocity, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. He swung late. He has to back up for it. Comes away with the out. And Posudnik's batting. Working on a fine ball game. Three for five to this point. He drove in that big run earlier in the game. Quality piece of hitting. Doing a nice job. Not trying to do too much. Game tied right now. They need him to tack on. Let's go. Greg gets set and delivers. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. That one's taken care of. Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here. And that's a in a row that he set down.
and Ramirez settles in first pitch. And Greg gets him swinging for the first strike. It's tough for hitters to protect both sides of the plate. You can't protect the outside and the inside, especially when you're throwing your fastball down and away. Ramirez will foul that one away. Struck him out, so they'll go to work, see if they can't win it in the bottom half. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here in this half inning. Here in New York, the extra. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. First pitch to Jeter. First pitch, a slider outside, 1-0. The 1 0 pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. And it makes it through. The winning run is on. Let's take a look right now. Let's break down Derek Jeter's season and the show where he falls in the rankings. 10th in hits, 11th in batting average. And as you can tell, he understands baseball. He's a baseball player. Those tough at bats ranked among the top 15 hitters in on base percentage. A critical statistic offensively. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And he'll be tagged out at first base. Well, nice stop by the first baseman there, but the runner able to advance in the scoring position there. Plays off a called strike, 0 and 1. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four seamer down and away. Takes one off the plate to even the count at one. Here's the pitch. Slider just off the black that time, two and one. This guy's got a great slider, Gary. When he's got control of it and can locate it where he wants, it's almost unfair to the hitter. Plays off the slider that time, three and one. Steve, uh, talking about that pitch and how unfair it is, we'll uh, know how good it is by the number of bats he saws off. Well, he gets so many swings and misses, too, where guys just can't center that ball. So he gets broken bats and swings and misses. Line drive. In time for the up. Now State Farm takes a look at last year's leaders in on-base percentage. Getting on base is a philosophy. It's a mental state. It's a really an approach, and these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major leagues. He's got it now. Throws to first in time. That's three down. They pick up no runs on a hit. Stranding a man at third base. Tie ball game in New York. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. He is just a triple shy of the cycle now. Well, it's the toughest leg of the cycle to get, but if he hits it into the gap, look at him run. There's a swing high and deep into center field. Way, way back there. And gone. A home run. That could be the game winner. And a solo home run that breaks the tie. Big clutch homer. So here's the graph that shows us the impact of that solo home run. Our Pepsi WPA graph. That's his second home run of the day right there. He's locked in, Gary. And that means he's seeing the baseball, Steve. Now, uh, Gary, White Sox couldn't be happier right now. They've gotten the hits they needed. They've taken the lead. They're looking to add on more, hoping to end up winning this game. Greg gets set and delivers. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Steve, there are clutch hits, and you get to extra innings. Any long ball is just that, and we just saw one. Well, they just deflated this crowd here right now as well. They thought they had victory in their sights, but right now they're trailing. Swing and a line drive. And Quentin's got himself a base hit. Well, this is getting ugly right now. I mean, he's giving up hit after hit after hit. This offense has clearly figured him out. How much longer can you leave men to take a beating? Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. The White Sox again with a great opportunity. 
Here's the first pitch. Fastball swung on a miss, stolen one. The best pitch in baseball is the fastball down and away, and if you can execute it, you can be very effective. That's why you got the swing and the miss. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Apparently he's looking for something a lot harder than that four-seam fastball. I don't know what else he has because he's way out in front. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. Well, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. Here's a swing and a line drive. Over to second for one. And they turn the double play. They pick up a run on the homer and they take the lead. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. And Jorge Posada up. Two hits for him in Number six trips. Jorge Posada. First pitch on the way. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0-1. The pitch, a swing and a fly ball to left center field. One away. For the State Farm leaderboard, uh, look at those teams who had the highest average last year. The Angels, number one. Second, the Yankees. The Twins, third. Fourth, the Red Sox. And for the Orioles, they are fifth. When you watch this team today, one of the top hitting teams in all of baseball last year, you can't get frustrated. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios, and it's in there, the tying run on board. Not wasting any time here. He jumps all over that first pitch and rips it in the center field. One out, runner on at first. First count on Granderson, here it comes. First pitch, a fastball, that's in there for a strike. Pena with a strike two. Good pitch. Sometimes you get a pitch, and if it's early enough in the count, you can just say, not this one. I'm going to wait for the next one. And it holds at 0-2. Strike two. Fouled away. But when a pitcher throws a pitch out there 0-2, you're expecting him to get a ground out or a strikeout. But this swung and a ground ball to third. Two away. Agnew might have been able to get the out at second, at least getting the lead runner, but at least they got the sure out at first. Look well, here, the fans on the edge of their seat right now. Let's see if the patience of Nick Johnson pays off and helps in this at bat. And he's got a chance here with a runner in scoring position, Steve, to get this thing knotted. Now the pitcher's got to find a way to retire this hitter and not let this run score. Clutch at bat here. And a grounder is at the last out. And on to first for out number three, and that's going to do it. The offense got it done on the top, and the pitching got it done on the bottom half, and celebration as they head back to the clubhouse. Now we award our Pepsi Clutch performer, Paul Canerco. Canerco just made all the difference. Well, anytime you have three legs of the cycle, you know you've had a decent enough game to help your team win. Look, would he have loved to hit the triple to get the cycle, something that's rarely done in Major League Baseball? Sure he would. But I think if you ask him after the game, he's going to say, look, all I want to do is help our team win. And that's what he did with those big, big hits. And they come into hostile territory, Steve, and take this one by one run. Well, both teams had a chance to win it. Goes down to the very end, but the visiting club outplayed them. I guess it's that time again. We wrap up this 2K Sports broadcast of MLB. John, Steve, our entire 2K Sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Adieu, adieu.